Hey everybody, Matt here. Over the 4th of July weekend, I enjoyed some fireworks in my neighborhood, from the comfort of my home of course, and also played some Dreamcast. And it got me thinking, what can I put in my Dreamcast to make it a little bit better? So I started looking online, I knew that there was a USB loader for it, and then also found the uh, an SD card loader, which is called the GDEMU. So when I went to the purchase page for it, it says that pre-orders are out of stock, just not happening. So I had to go a slightly different route. Uh, apparently the fellow who makes it um, had uh, somehow clones were made of his GDEMU. So while I'm not <laughs> very happy with doing this, I purchased a clone and uh, went ahead and installed it in my Dreamcast. I'm not sure when they're gonna go back in stock, the actual legit ones. Uh, I was looking into firmware updates for the legit one, which cannot be applied to the, the GDEMU clones. But in any event, it works exactly the same despite no firmware updates. But also the last firmware update for the legit one hasn't been for quite some time. So as you can see, this is a, a 3D printed mount, very similar to the one uh, that we installed in the GameCube for the GD loader in there. This is officially the last 3d printed thing i will ever purchase uh because also over the fourth of july weekend i got myself a 3d printer and it's been a ton of fun printing things out on that the great thing about installing this is that it's very straightforward i didn't have to <laughs> make any space in the shell uh like i did for the gamecube very similar idea install a board install a uh, an sd card extension cord uh so you can load the SD card without having to get your hand all stuck inside the system and whatnot. So let's get started on the GDEMU install. So to start off, you have to make sure that you have a version one model, the Dreamcast, and the way to check is to look for this little number one underneath. This is the last disc that will ever be in this Dreamcast. You're gonna pop off the modem on the side and then take the four screws out, one in each corner with a long Phillips head. Take off the cover, there's no ribbons attached. Put the screws aside safely. And we'll come back to the lid soon. There are three screws that you have to take out in order to remove the disk drive. This one here, this guy, and then one towards the back. And then the drive should just pop right out. So one thing I've already done to this Dreamcast is replace the battery with an easier to replace battery. It's just a little socket and the battery can pop in and out if this ever fails in the future. And I've also adjusted the little potentiometer here. So we're going to take the power supply out, unplug the power wire, and there's two screws to undo. And the board just pops right out. You need to be careful when taking it out. You have to use some force to pop the board up from that side. Go ahead, turn on your soldering iron. And this area right here is what we're going for. To remove this guy right here. This is some uh, some wick to remove the solder, and this is a solder sucker, cool little pump. And what I did was I heated up the area a little bit before applying some of the wick, just to uh, loosen things up a bit. I 
fix it to the rescue. I applied some heat to this surface mount resistor here, this little guy towards the top. Well, bottom from this angle. And then I had to go in with a little bit of wick. And what the wick does is it soaks up solder, as you'll see here in a second. Went at it from both sides, get up as much as possible. See that there. And went at it again for the resistor here. And basically uh, repeated that until the parts start coming off. Gave the uh, solder sucker a shot too. Wasn't very successful with this. It took off maybe a smidge before I went right back to the wick, which was clearly doing a better job. At this point, the resistor came off. And you see how tiny this guy is here. I can barely see it. There you go. We're gonna toss that guy out. Next, I turned it over and took the screw out to make this guy a little easier to take out at this point. I heated up the rest of the solder around those three pins and slowly started to force it through the holes. The wick removed the bulk of the solder and uh, the rest was just applying heat and a little bit more wick. Just to remove whatever was left at this point. And here we go. Basically this part was optional. Removing this piece will eliminate some heat from the system. Uh, this 12 volt rail that I just removed basically powered the disk drive that's no longer in there. So by removing that, we're also eliminating some heat. So we're gonna go ahead and plug the power supply back in. And screw those two screws in and plug that cable back in as well. And let's take a look at the GDEMU clone board, which looks incredibly similar to the original. This button here is like a, a reset. This is where the SD card goes. And here's the bottom of the board. This is the end that plugs into the motherboard. It's going to rest on top of this 3D printed bracket, which has a little lip on it, as you see here. So you're going to use the two of the original screws to screw this guy back in, and this long silver screw here also. So these two lower ones are the ones that receive the, uh, the, the original screws. And that new screw will go through here into the frame of the system itself. Plugs in nice and flush. And then we can go ahead and screw that long one in there. Not going anywhere. So at this point, 
you can take the SD card and pop it in there. And close the system up. But that's not all for this one. Take that SD card on out of here. Now we're going to work on the lid and install this 3D printed mount. We're going to use two screws for the SD card slot that it comes with. That's not moving. This here is the, uh, the reset button. It reaches all the way down and clicks on that button that we just saw on the GDEMU. We're going to use three of these tiny black screws to keep this in place. The SD card extender plugs into the GDEMU itself. And then we could just fold the ribbon up gently. And the top goes right back on. So once all the four of those original screws are back in the shell, pop in that extendo button. Nice and satisfying click there. Now let's head over to the PC with the SD card. So this SD card is a 256 gig, currently formatted as XFAT. And we need that to be FAT32. So from the link down below, Bridge Crop Consultants, you're gonna click on the image that's there in that link, and it's gonna download the uh, format tool that we're gonna need. Next, we're gonna head over to Lou Hikes GitHub and download UGGM either the zip file or the 7z file that's there either one will do and those will both go to your download folder or wherever you tell them to go so with the sd card in we're going to make sure that we have the correct sd card selected and run the fat32 format and hit start and that's it this is now formatted If you right click on your SD card, you'll see the 256 gig card is now FAT32. I'm going to go ahead and extract UGGM and run GDEMU SD card manager.exe. So at the top, click browse and go to your 100% completely legal backup folder for your Dreamcast games. and click select folder. Don't hit scan yet like I did. On the left side there, you're going to have to select your SD card and then click scan. And this application tells you if a game is already on the SD card, which is really, really great. So what I did was I selected copy for each game and then shrink for each game also. This can significantly decrease the size of a lot of these games. Click Create Menu Index and then apply selected actions and let that do its thing for a few minutes. So when it's all done, you see the size of some of these games here, like Ikaruga is only 38 megabytes down from 1.1 gigs. That's that's incredible. So let's go ahead and pop the SD card in our system and power it on. What we're greeted with is the original Dreamcast loading screen. So 
Sorry for all the banding on my screen. So since loading those games on, I added a couple of more. But we're going to get things started here with some Gigawing 2. Now there's no firmware to install on the GDEMU. You just put games on it and that's it. So this game loaded up pretty quick also. And it plays just like an original game. Let's go ahead and load up some Street Fighter Alpha 3, my favorite Street Fighter game. And of course, I had to try out some Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 also. I made this character back in, I don't know, 2000 or 2001. <laughs> The system is really quiet. Games do load a bit, a little bit faster from what I noticed. I feel like Dreamcast games didn't really take too long to load. At least these few that I remember having a disc for and playing them from. Let's select a different level and see how quickly that loads. As you see, that was only a few seconds. I hope you guys are enjoying these tunes because I'm over here rocking out. <laughs> All right, let's uh let's pretend like that never happened. And let me show you real quick what happens when you press the button. It loads a random game, which is pretty cool. Holding it down brings you back to the Dreamcast menu, and pressing it once loads a random game on the SD card. Pretty cool wild card button. So as you see, the install was pretty simple. Uh, just need a screwdriver. Uh, the 3D printed parts aren't necessary. Uh, it does come with little standoffs that the uh, the GDEMU board can sit on. The 3D printed part was just, I feel, nice to hold things together inside. 
it makes the system so much quieter uh, except if you have the uh, the all black Sega Sports model uh, that one was already pretty quiet from from what I remember because my original one was the black Sega Sports uh, I traded with my brother and this is my original from back then so with the GD EMU clone and maybe the legit one uh, from what I researched online I cannot install the DC HDMI mod so that means I'm gonna have to come out of this and go VGA possibly into an OSSC when I get one and then take it from there because my ultimate plan is to get it hooked up to this big TV here so what do you guys think of the GDEMU install you think it's something that you would want to do do you think it's worth it once again I do <laughs> that's the trend in every video it's worth it it's always worth it talk to me in the comments if it's something you've done already or something you're thinking of doing uh, do you have the legit model What's your stance on using a clone? I know it's not the greatest thing. It's not me directly supporting the guy that made it. Uh, instead, I'm giving my money to some random thieves. I guess we'll just call them thieves for now. Talk to me in the comments. I'm gonna go hook this back up and play. Stay well. Peace.